gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. We got a treat especial by way of baby doll. I hear treat especial and baby doll. My ears perk right up. I got to get it hotted up here. Something wrong. It's cold as a bronze bidet. Now this epiphany, subsequent teardown, come by way of baby doll. Says she to me. Let's go on a date. Shine up your muckers. I'm taking you dancing. Now it being the lamest apocalypse ever. Also here in the outer rim, the dance scene on a Wednesday night ain't too grand. Ended up going to the local curry shop. Had the whole place to ourselves. Felt as good as trees. A couple kingfisher in me, some Chardonnay from a goon bag for her. Laughing and carrying on. Uh, the Palak Paneer, you know, the white gold combo number one. Alu Gobi, some Pakoras, all the hits. Uh, too chilly, I think. Uh, hot, spice enough for you. That's my, apologize. That's my Irish Scotsman, uh, Punjabi. Says she to me with a predatory gleam in her eye. Oh, it's but 7.30. We got the sitter till 8. We can be a little late. You want to, uh, I says, is it my birthday? To which she replies, you want to, you know, go to Costco? That's when I realized I am a grown up. Lay one of them muzzles on me then. Let's go on and go. However, I seize the opportunity to have a little fun in the shop. I bought a tool, one of them chargers, those boost pack chargers. What, holy old fuck, that's getting hot. On the healing bench, straight from the Casca, a Type S jump star tear and USB charger. Contiendo una juego. Un, 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 juego. The thing is about the Casca is there's some trust there that if and they sell you junk, you can trust that they'll take it back. And that, that's a beautiful thing, but I'm wondering if it also allows them to kind of lower the quality of the products that they uh, distribute, some of these oddball stuff, you know, in the side aisles, because people will still buy it knowing that it's Costco and they'll always take it back. In any case, Vic Dich, Type S, Fuck, that's fast. Look at that. The surgeon's kiss. Not a hair harmed on its chinny chin chin. And demonetized. Time! Right off the hop here. You could probably bean somebody with this and not hurt this at all. It's like a brick. It's kind of nice for a consumer grade good to be reasonably robust. It's got the USB charge air behind a little flapper. Some nice outputs, some inputs to charge it. It's got the USB-C. The fact that the USB-C is directionally agnostic is, is agnostic rather is friggin' brilliant. However, they trade that off in robustness. It doesn't seem to last nearly as long as the micro. You know, you get jamming in there. I know my phone there, the Pixel. Uh, it ain't no fucking good at all. It only charges on the chi charger now the wireless charging because that though well, i go ahead and uh, take some movies with the phone i had the house running there for the first time in forever just getting there commissioned up and i can't get the bloody footage off the phone to show you the, the glory that is the spin -a thing and spindle moving on now we have an oled display which is backlit it doesn't need to be backlit like an lcd display liquid crystal 
and it probably works better in the cold so that's great it takes a little bit more power there's of course it's an organic led uh, there's a layer or of magical organic schmoo in betwixt the between of an anode and a cathode and uh, angries up the pixies and you drop a valence level and out shoots a photon unlike the lcd you don't need a backlight as i said this is very stiff nicely done we'll look at the specs as indicated 8000 milliamp hour uh, at 3.7 volts see they're being wily now this outputs 12 volts so this would either be a lithium uh, poly, poly pack you know those little uh, al aluminized packets or would be a bunch of 18650 lithium batteries and we can see the rated capacity is through the roof 29.6 and oh watt watt hours so that's where they're getting you um normally used to seeing that in amp hours but i also got a little led in there and that's nice because you never need this charger when the bright skies are shining it's always pissing rain or snowing in the dark uh, one thing i don't like well one thing that's nice is the switch itself is a proper tactile switch however it's shielded too deeply you know that feeling you get when you don't know if you're actuating the button you got to press harder because it, it feels oh no no it's got the tacti cool blinking that looks like sos to me it's got the tacti cool blinking what you put on the bottom of your rifle to blind assailants and that's precisely what it does when actuated at the wrong friggin time i have no idea the lengths of stupidity it would take to put that kind of feature in a consumer good but there we have it you make something idiot proof and the world invents a better idiot in this case the world invents a better engineered Let's pop out these little plugs. Six fasteners. Hopefully it's not glued, screwed, and tattooed. It'd be nice if it uh, just come apart. I'm curious to see whether it's a poly lipo pack or if it's 18650s. A little bit toyed in there. Clamshell comes apart nice. Ought to go back together nice. Whoop. You know, it takes a lot of work to get these clamshells to fit perfect. And these ones fit nice and tight. I'm surprised at how robust it feels in the hand. And it's also got some TPS over molding there. Not very many anchoring points. However, you know, this won't be exposed to industrial solvents or anything like that. And we also just got some open cell foam there, some neoprene in order to preload this battery so it's not mechanically weeble wobbling around. That's the board there, Axia. I don't see that brand marking on here, the Type S, other than the typical hit show in Big Rock Candy Mountain. What we can do is we'll see if this board has the same branding and then we'll know it come from the same factory. This, this is a beautiful lithium polymer pack, quite well made. We see it's got not just bare aluminized casement, but also some structural tape and some heat shrink on there sharp corners on the end of course what they do well it's a lithium battery okay so what's happening is you have one side the anode one side the cathode they stick angry pixies on the one side it attracts the positive lithium ions and then when you want to discharge it you send the angry pixies to the other side and the lithium ion migrates through an electrolyte over to the other platen and because it's reversible it's rechargeable now we've got the main board out and it is indeed the same brand axia got a holtec micro controller on there 
as well as a whole bunch of other little jelly bean parts controlling the charging and the output for the USB stuff as well as for charging the battery and the balancing over here. It's a nicely implemented circuit with some Celastic on the stuff, the pokey outy bits. It's even got a daughter board wave soldered at 90 degrees. Looks like it'd be off the shelf. You just buy that LCD. It's got cooling vias already built right in. A clean, clean, nice little board. Nothing wrong with that at all. As witnessed by the check mark. Here's the OLED board and input switch. A little ribbon cable here. Not much else going on, but the OLED controller. A little MOSFET here for switching something or an ORF. The tactile switch, if only it was mounted a little bit closer to the switch. There is a design requirement for human beings that if they don't get an input, if they don't see that their input is working within 50 milliseconds, they start to second guess themselves and they start pushing harder. Uh, just like, you know, you're waiting for crossing the road and you hit the button and nothing happens. So now when they put in one of those switches, there's a little beep boop. So it feeds back so you know it's working so you don't got to hit the button 200,000 times. I mean, that doesn't preclude people from hitting it the whole time just to be irritating, but at least there's some feedback there. And in this case, that tactile snap action isn't stiff enough to give you any real tactile feedback. So what you end up doing is the old 200 pound gorilla mashing the button until something happens. So I think they could fix that and that would just make the uh, user usability and user interaction a little bit nicer if they just mounted this a little further up so that it, it stopped the movement and you knew something was happening. Maybe even a little beep boop. I'm going to prize this out, but i got to be reasonably careful about it because it's quite delicate, the construction of which. I researched this a while ago because I was curious about the, the fade, the, the mechanism of why these fail if they are rechargeable. These were invented in 79, actually, a fella by the name of Good Enough, Good Enough, in uh, Texas invented these with a bunch of, or I had a paper, you know, a fucking brainiac, in 79, and it didn't really get commercialized until the 2000s. You know, we didn't see lithium batteries uh, around until the 2000s. Amazingly high energy density compared to regular old batteries. Now, the way these are constructed is there's two layers of foil, uh, a metal foil, one layer being copper, which is the anode, the cathode, being aluminum and of course because it's a battery and you can charge it the anode and the cathode actually swap but we're referring to the anode in the discharging state that is the anode is negative and it discharges a an electrode over to the positive on that copper plate the anode they put some graphite now graphite is carbon in a hexagonal ring and that uh, they're essentially platelets it makes really good lubrication but it also is very good for all kinds of different chemistries so what they do is they put a paste a thin paste on that copper platen then they put a dielectric fabric over top of that and that dielectric uh, fabric maybe polyethylene uh it can take up electrolyte, electrolyte in order to allow the lithium ions to flow between the two, to migrate between the two plates. And that electrolyte is actually the flammable part. You have a whole bunch of energy in here, and then if it gets pierced, you have a flammable element, which is the electrolyte. It is, oh, it's got some lithium phosphorus and fluorine in it uh, LIPF6 if I'm not mistaken which would be lithium hexafluoride phosphate or lithium fluoride bald pate I can't remember one of the two and this is what I'm getting to is that in a roundabout kind of way 
is that it doesn't work nearly as well in the cold as it does in the heat. Now, heat has its own problems for fade and so forth, but for straight performance of boosting your battery, this doesn't work for shit in the cold. So you need to have a working battery that's just dead and then trickle charge it from this because chances are you go out and it's 40 below, you're freezing your big brass nards off, the thing is not going to have enough chooch to get that engine turned over so you got to keep these kind of things if you're relying on them you got to keep them in the warm you throw them in the back of the truck and it's 40 below it ain't gonna work if you pierce this you get a organic solvent come out which is flammable it's uh, ethylene carbonara and dimethyl carbonara in a mixture now you would think uh, because of all the explosions in lithium that this stuff is dangerous as all get out it's not that bad it has a flash point of 17 degrees uh, science which means at 17 degrees science essentially room temperature it puts off enough vapor to ignite in normal atmosphere now something like an acetone is actually minus 17 gasoline which is a holy terror of an organic solvent and so utterly dangerous. If we didn't use it in our cars, it would be completely outlawed because it has a flash point of minus 40 dungarees science. And very likely Frankenstein as well. Just be careful with the gasoline. Ew, well, we're sorting fly shit from pepper with boxing gloves on. We'll make a plan. I'm going to charge this or attempt to charge this with the cover off and get some IR shots to see what hots up. Uh oh, where's oh that one goes there. Okay. And the balancing. It works. It's working. I set the charge in this thing up and I, I didn't get very far because it occurred to me when you're boosting a vehicle and it starts, then you can charge this with the alternator of the vehicle, which means that there would have to be some control. No, there would have to be some control or some diodes in here to prevent that from happening. So if you can charge it off of the alternator, which I strongly doubt because lithium technology requires very specialized charging procedures. So I would assume there's going to be some electronicals in here, maybe some passives, big diodes or something. And there's no passives in there, no fuse, nothing at all. So how are they doing that? Since I'm not 100% sure how we're doing this, there's no better way than to just do it. It's the worst that happens. We let the smoke out. Whilst I got that charging, I got poking around the accoutrement. Aha! A great Jesus clue on the end of the dingus end. That is a little bit big to be cables alone and a uh, nice length of cable there but I guess yeah you don't need too much because that brick is pretty small I have a feeling there's a relay in here there's a bunch of uh, fault indicators I don't know where the LED is green and red but let's get this a part well that thing is charged Okay, well, this is now this is cool. Okay, so we see a board made not by Axia, by a third party, kind of a jelly bean off the shelf board, not made to the same standard, or not designed nearly as well, kind of as scabbly designed compared to the Axia boards, but it has a little speaker on there, a little buzzer, and what appears to be. Well, 
I would venture to say those are diodes, but they're two different sets. And three leads plus the base with some heat sinking vias. Maybe not diodes at all, maybe MOSFETs. Switching, so we'd have NPN and the obverse of that PNP. Just thinking about this now, it cannot, they cannot be diodes. Why would they be arranged mechanically in that pattern? It doesn't make a sense. They gotta be MOSFETs. The number high 4903 on the one guy and NCE3QH29D on the other guy. Yeah, they gotta be MOSFETs. That would make this the driver. As I say, she's fully charged at 100%. We're gonna get this old school battery tester. This is just a resistive element. If you look in behind the louvers, you can see that kind of ink and L, big fat wire. That puts a load on the battery and it just monitors the voltage. And if the voltage drops below what you'd need to cold clank the engine, then uh, it ain't no fucking good at all. So we're gonna do that. We're also going to check the voltage drop across those MOSFETs on the negative side. We'll see how much uh, all that current going through there, how much voltage drop is actually doing it while it's cranking. At the same time, we are going to get the IR gun out and, uh, or IR camera rather, and just have a wee boo at this to see what hots up. See, we're already strange okay well, we don't want that to touch that that would be bad let's just give this a shot here oh yeah kind of a double-ended operation this goes here and this goes here this goes here Okay, so we got a leakage voltage of 5 volts there. And then when we actually crank, we're getting a voltage drop across those. Strange. I don't think it wants to do it. I discovered the trick. You actually got to turn it on. All right, we got 12 volts at the clamps. Now we're going to just put this here so we can see the voltage drop across. At the uh, MOSFET. Corn act. Putting out 76 amps. And the drop across there. What? 12 volt drop across those. That doesn't make a sense. What am I missing here? Okay, it's off now. So there's something... Yeah, and the indication has changed. So that's something you got to watch for. You very likely need to disconnect this to reset it. Hit that button. Oh, oh God. See, this is exactly what would happen. Your ball's deep in a greasy old mess. And you got that thing blinking at you. I'm going to have to refer to my Mexican buddy, even though it's like cheating. Manuel, let's see what these two lights mean. Does blinking lights in? Oh, wait, no, I don't. It's on here. <laughs> Disconnect and reset. No sound. Disconnect and reset. Disconnect. And reset. Like so? Nah. Well, how do you reset? Fuck. Now, that's a pain that can't right there when you got to disconnect and reconnect to reset instead of just hitting a button. It doesn't make a sense to me. It's stupid. It, it's If it works the first time, you're great. But otherwise, you're not going to remember how this works. You're going to have to look up the manual, uh, traffic, uh, nightmare, nightmare. 
let's give this a go. The other thing that is disconcerting is that why would the entirety, almost the entirety of the voltage drop be from these MOSFETs to this clamp? That's all we're measuring. It's just this wire. And the, of course, the, the MOSFETs, the switches. What are we doing here? Contact. And we're showing weak. Okay, there. That's a proper voltage drop. And then it cuts out. How long was that? Five seconds? Ten seconds? 76 amps? Ten seconds? I don't think you'd be able to start a... Definitely wouldn't be able to start a truck in the cold. Now, this is super interesting because this is Casca. So... You you bought into the club. You're you're part of the country club set now. You you belong. You're a member, and they always take things back. And also, I like shopping there because the people in retail generally are are underpaid and and you know they got to deal with the gen the likes of me. Ugh. But at Costco, you know, at least they're making a decent living wage. They're, they're, you know, as far as retail goes, working at Costco, pretty fucking good pretty fucking good but in this case really nicely built however just this one problem makes it completely useless to me unless you're in the tropics you know kickstarting your honda 50 this thing ain't no fucking good at all what is it cranking for like five seconds and then you gotta reset it you gotta physically pull out that super tight connector, jam that back in, reset it. So you're running back and forth to crank and so forth. Just if you're using this, what you want to do is connect it up to the battery and wait and allow it to kind of trickle charge the battery. And that way you get the cold cranking amps out of your main lead acid battery and not this. We saw 70 you're not going to be starting up your your Dodge Diesel in Fort McMurray with the thing. You might get by starting your Honda Civic in the Fort Lauderdale. Maybe. Kind of. Maybe. Who knows? Now, it does show it's still at 92%. So, what they're doing is they're doing a thermal cutoff to make sure you don't overcrank and cook any of these. These are very low on resistance. So, what's getting hot? Got to be protecting the battery. Got to be. So I think this thing uh, is going to go back to Casca. I dropped it. <laughs> That's the beauty of Casca. No, we'll put her back together, uh, keep her here in the shop on the off chance that we uh, need to start a lawnmower or something. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a voice. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Boom, 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 boom. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ah, God. Fucking tiny little leads. Story of my life. So that means not good. Backwards. The problem is you got to unplug this Jesus thing. To get it to reset. That's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard of.